In this video, you will learn what instant segmentation for image analysis is and about Aphoria, the AI for image analysis platform that has the capability of instant segmentation. Hi, welcome to the Digital Pathology Place. I'm Alexandra Jura and I'm here to help you do better digital pathology and image analysis. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. And if you want to learn more about digital pathology, subscribe to our newsletter and take our digital pathology crash course. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Let us start with explaining how image analysis looks from the pathologist's point of view. For a pathologist, there are two main categories of structures of interest. It can be either objects or regions. Objects can be cells, it can be subcellular structures, non-cellular structures that are objects as well, for example, beta amyloid plaques, and objects made out of cells, but where the cells are not of interest. For example, in kidney glomeruli, it's built of cells, but we don't care about the cell, we care about the glomerulus. Whereas regions are larger areas of tissue that share common characteristics. For example, the epithelial and the stromal component of the tumor tissue. In image analysis, we care about the quantification of structures of interest. We can be interested in counting. This would correspond to the computer vision task of object detection. We might be interested in localization and exact delineation of our structure of interest. This would correspond to the computer vision task of semantic segmentation, or we can be interested in both. And this would correspond to the task of instant segmentation. Let's take a step back and talk about the computer vision tasks relevant for tissue image analysis. The most basic one is classification and localization. And you can see on the image that we have giraffes, they're classified as giraffes and they are localized within a big bounding box. The next task is a little bit more sophisticated because each giraffe is actually identified on the picture. We have giraffe one with one bounding box, giraffe two within the second bounding box, and giraffe three in the third bounding box. And this is called object detection. If we want to increase the complexity even more, we can delineate all the giraffes. And this is called semantic segmentation. And notice that all the giraffes are blended together. We do not distinguish here each of the giraffes. The giraffes are delineated very nicely, but they merge and they are, so to say, a giraffe region. We don't have each giraffe separated from the other giraffe. And if we wanted to have that, well, then we would have to implement instant segmentation. In instant segmentation, we have all the giraffes classified as giraffes, but we also have each giraffe separately. Each instance of the class giraffe is delineated separately. So we begin with localization and classification, then we move into object detection. We may want to have semantic segmentation, but for many problems, we might need instant segmentation. So what's the difference between semantic segmentation and instant segmentation? The instant segmentation has the step of object detection within the segmentation step. This is the difference. Let's have a look on a real life example in the Aphoria software. And our example specimen is gonna be a microglial cell with many processes. We wanna see how we can segment each of those processes. Here we are in Aphoria. This is a mouse brain. And let's zoom in to our microglial cell. Let's see if there is a nice one. Yes, this is going to be the specimen we're going to be working with. That's our cell. And you can see it has 
many processes. This is annotation in orange within the training region in black. And here are our processes. We annotated them separately because this is what we are aiming for. We want to segment them. So we have to train the neural network to see them as separate. And let's annotate this one. Yes. And here you see the problem. We have two processes that are originating from the same stem. But we want to have them separately and we want to have them as long as they really are. So let's see what is happening when we have the semantic segmentation mode. They merge and this is not what we want. Let's move to the instant segmentation mode and here is our cell of interest again. We see all the processes. Let's see our annotation, the annotation of the cell. This is the instance of the cell that is marked with a circle and this is our annotation. And these are the instances of all the processes. The, circle are, the circles are instances and here are the annotations. And we have here our problematic piece of the cell. This is where we had the processes merging. They originate from the same stem and with semantic segmentation, they were merging. We tried to annotate, but it didn't work. And now we're gonna annotate with instance segmentation. And as you may know, they will not merge this time. They're gonna be kept separately, even though they originate from the same stem. Here are the instances. We have to mark them in advance. And here the result of the analysis. The cell in orange and the processes, each of them separately in purple with their corresponding instances. The circles are instances. And here we have the segmentation and you can see that both of those processes are segmented separately even though they originate from the same stem. So if this is something of interest for us, which it is in this project, then instance segmentation is the method to choose. Thanks for watching. If you would like to learn more about digital pathology, take our free digital pathology crash course. I'm going to leave the description in the link below. See you in the next episode.